strategy show. So why don't you? can try fighting the law all you want, but the law is always going to win. From politicians and celebrities to sports figures and business leaders, they're fighting the law. Now here to sort out the nation's top legal news stories is America's favorite legal analyst, Royal Oaks. This is the Royal Oaks Show. Thank you, Mike Horn, and welcome to the Royal Oak Show, and welcome to our co-host, Ken Jeffries. Ken, how are you doing? Hey, it's only like 94 degrees today. The temperature went down a lot. Balmy. What's going it, on? We're almost into fall. And our millennial correspondent, Connor Oaks, is here. Connor, how are you doing? I'm doing very well. Happy to be here. Excellent. Well, guys, uh, I just want to uh, acquaint some of the, the new viewers to uh, the way we do things here on the Royal Oak Show. Uh, and I think technically, Mike Gary... Um, Everybody's a new viewer because didn't you run a study and there are actually no repeat? <laughs> there are no repeat viewers. Isn't that what it's we concluded? Didn't the memo? It's a hundred percent turnover. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah one and done. One and done. Over, yeah. <laughs> We're new. So here's it what sounds we like a do. very successful restaurant. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Uh, and it's sad because we've been doing this for a year. Uh, so our first feature we always like to get into is the moron of the week. We picked somebody really stupid, and then we have another moron candidate at the end of the show. We vote on who is most moronic, and that gives us moron. And I'll of say, the, week. the moron of the week is very rarely one of us. That's true. And that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, we've got yeah, like a, two, a two-thirds of batting average on that. We also have a feature called Guess the Verdict, where I throw out some really wacky lawsuits to our panel. It's, it's sort of like a game show. And uh, Ken and Con guess who would win these lawsuits, and we, we total up their batting averages. Uh, we also have a new feature we're launching this show a little later in the program. It's called The Monologue. And the problem with comedy is you tell a joke, and you're ego-invested in it, right? It, you want people to laugh, and then they don't. Then and you feel bad. Painful. We've come up with a new system. Each of us has written a joke, but we won't be reading the joke we wrote. We'll be reading the joke written by one of the other guys. So we don't give a damn if nobody laughs. It, it's solved. We've solved the problem of comedy anxiety, it's wouldn't brilliant. you say? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I've this had a is case of be that great. for years. Yeah. yeah so uh, we're going to get to that in the middle of the program. And our final feature, you're going to love this. It's hot tub time machine. What we're going to do is reach into the distant, dim recesses of the past, come up with a sound bite somewhere in history. Plato talking to Socrates. They had a surveillance. We have audio of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're yeah. going to play it at the end of the show. You guys are going to guess it, and I will give you a little tease. It is a president of the U.S. coining a phrase that will live in infamy. So that's what we're going to get to at the end of the show. So let's uh, get it uh, kicked off. Um, we have our our guess uh, guess the verdict uh, feature, which we're going to start with today. I'm going to give you the facts of a case, guys, and you tell me who was the winner and who's the loser. Uh, this involves an Oregon farmer. He parks his truck in town and he goes shopping. Sounds innocent enough so yeah. far. He returns to find the truck has been in the middle of a shootout between the police and a bank robber. The mm -hmm. cops dismantle the truck to get the bullets. you got to get evidence, oh, right? Sure. Then they return the truck to the farmer in pieces in pieces. <laughs> he sues for the $2,300 it cost to put the truck back together. So the Oregon Supreme Court wound up weighing in on this. Mm. Who do you think might have won? Uh, Connor, let's let's get your guess for, uh, first. Would it be the poor schlub farmer with his uh, truck in pieces or yeah, would it be I the mean, city, uh, the cops who refuse to pay? It To me, it sounds totally reasonable that the cops would have to pay there. The problem is what happens when you start forcing the cops to pay for everything that they have to do in yeah. furtherance of enforcing the law. It's true. It, it starts to become a question of not just when they cause damage, monetary harm, should they pay it back, but did they do something negligent and wrong? So, so who wins? Farmer so, John or I, Officer Bob? I think Officer Bob wins this Officer one. Bob? Now, what about you? You know, as my longstanding... Uh, <laughs> policy now is I agree with Connor. It's, uh, <laughs> you no, guys I, are, I think that's right for yeah, some reason. And yeah. It's wrong, but I think it's right. You yeah. guys are both right. Uh, Oregon Supreme Court rules for the city yeah, fine. saying we'll reassembling your vehicle is like performing a civic duty, like serving on a jury. I love it. Case number two, guys, Santa Cruz, California. They've got a body image task force, what? and it sues a chain of movie theaters for violation of the Santa Cruz ban on discrimination based on appearance. Some folks are kind of 
hefty. The overweight moviegoers can't fit into seats that are designed for folks that are only 18 inches wide. So uh, who, inches. who won this lawsuit, the Body Image Task Force or the theater that just didn't have theater seats that were wide enough? You know... 18 inches ain't that wide. All right. The idea that there's a body image task force is kind of odd. Wait, how wide is we're on camera so they can see? We're on Facebook Live, by the way. Facebook Hi, Live. Facebook Live. Hi, Facebook. Uh, what, and next week we're going to have an entirely new crew of Facebook Live watchers. <laughs> yeah. No repeats. Turnover. No repeats. Uh, 18 inches wide is about, is about this. this big? It's about yay big. And I'll tell you what, that would not be a comfortable airline seat or movie seat. So I'm going to say the, the theater goes down. Okay, and what about you, Ken? I disagree. Okay. Wow, all I right. Dis you think, I the, think theater the theater, theater wins? I think the theater wins. I think the theater wins. Okay. And if you don't want to go to that theater, you don't have to. Yeah, bad news Bad news for the theater. Uh, the hefty Santa Cruz folks won, and what? they agreed to put in love seats with removable armrests. So everybody's happy. Love seat, remove the armrest. I'm not Fun. happy because I lost. Wait a minute. Third and final <laughs> case, guys. Gabor and Catalin Deli are gymnastic coaches at the University of Minnesota. Mm -hmm. They're fired after home videos of their love love-making sessions are accidentally played as part of the student's training films. Oh. So the student reporters at the school newspaper demand that the videos be made public. Why? Well, it says the law says evidence used by a public institution to justify a firing has to be made public. You can't just keep that under wraps. The school's lawyer says the kids are just looking for a cheap thrill. Yeah. So who do you think wins? The, uh, the law, the um, school trying to keep the love-making videos under wraps? Love or the uh, the Love. young Woodward and Bernsteins of the <laughs> Minnesota Daily Bugle. Yeah, maybe uh, Woody and Bernsteins. Uh, but oh! hey -oh. So uh, I think I thought this was a family show. Uh, it's definitely not. So <laughs> I, I think the uh, I think the kids <laughs> lose on this one. I think yeah. they actually probably lose on some sort of quasi standing issue, yeah. as though uh, this law is there to protect people who are. Uh, asserting that information has to be released to justify, that was used to justify their firing. Right. So it probably doesn't make much sense to try to protect people who are not involved at all. It's not really a law or rule for the public. It's more for the person who's being fired. Okay. And if that person's not asserting it, I don't think the case you. is going to okay. be successful. Ken, what's your guess? Ba based on, on my new uh, way of doing things, <laughs> uh, I'm going to disagree with Connor. Okay, all right. Because I think actually the, uh, the, ki the kid, the, the young Wood Woodies and Bernsteins, <laughs> <Dude>. uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> probably have a point. See their teacher's skin flip. Uh, That's right. Fantastic. So, sorry, the tapes are not released. Uh, the school gets to keep Look, it under. You mean the tapes are not really? <laughs> it's very good. You got to work and on they can Trump see that on Facebook too. Live. That is a Nixon very friend. good Jimmy Carter. Yeah. I have hardly seen Wait, Jimmy, Hold Jimmy Carter. Oh, no, I'm yeah. sorry, oh, Richard no. Nixon. So, uh, no. moron of the week is our our other feature guys, and I have to tell you, this guy, I think, I don't want to bias you on our vote. I think he's the king of the morons. Uh, he is a, a fellow named Raymond Reinke. He's age 55. He's visiting Yellowstone National Park. And what does he do? He taunts the bison. He teases them. Oh, I saw that. Yes. Right, that was he, on TV a few times. He teases times, yeah. them with an, an <laughs> animalistic grunt, balling up his fists and hunching over. Uh, right. His uh, behavior is described on a video. Of course, it went viral. It's reckless, dangerous, and illegal. Yeah. The, the Yellowstone superintendent, Dan Wink. Of course, he's biased. Uh, Yellowstone official have warned visitors not to fraternize with bison and other wildlife. In recent years, a woman was injured trying to take a selfie near a bison, and a bison calf had to be euthanized after a visitor put it in the back of an SUV. I remember uh, that, too. Yeah. I, I remember that. Uh, yeah. Your memory is like a steel trap. It's so catching a lot of bison. <laughs> so d d would you agree, guys, that this, this fellow uh, really deserves the title? You know, the, it's early. We're going to have yes, a competitor. Well, but, but I think he's up there with the uh, idiots and the morons. And the other thing, though, says you can't fraternize with bot. What do you do? Go out to happy hour with them? What do you, you know? I don't. Get well, it. I mean, the problem is you put a video of yourself socializing, having a drink with a bison on Facebook Live, for example, and uh, some other idiot goes out and tries. You know, it. What's a nice bison like you doing in a place like this? <laughs> what, do, what do you say to that? So it's going to be a, an uphill climb for somebody else to compete with this guy, but we'll get the second candidate later in the show. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, somebody from Buffalo.
So let's go Ooh, to the United oh, yeah, Kingdom, nice. guys. Yeah. We're in our Bizarro World segment. We are going to get to the top stories of the week, the Manafort trial and so on, after our first pause. But uh, let's go to the U.K. because there's a woman there who claims she's had sex with 20 different ghosts in the last 11 years. And I'm just wondering, uh, perhaps, perhaps she needs a little professional hold, help. Hold up, hold up. How does she know it's not the same ghost? Just... Well, over Obviously, Connor, yeah. are you assuming that all ghosts look alike? Well, I, mean, I assume that not being be incorporeal, they could probably morph their appearance in some way and say, well, I'm Patrick Swayze now, and then I'm, you know, I just or become Ca a new Casper, a yeah. Casper, Casper and more, new yeah. novel and, and a new attractive this ghost. Is, this is phantom philandering or, or specter sex, I nice. think is what's Excellent. going on. Excellent. But this lady specter insists sex. that she <laughs> has had a sex uh, for the last 11 years with 20 different ghosts. That's a really, really interesting way to say you're lonely. It reminds me of the lady, and maybe you remember this story, perhaps you reported on this for KBC, Ken. There was a woman who claimed that she married the San Diego Amtrak station. She literally had a romantic relationship with the train station. Mm. And psychologists actually came up with a term having to do with a person who feels that they have a real romantic relationship with a, a non a you know, human uh, inanimate yeah. object. Sure. And this woman actually went through a marriage ceremony. Mm. And I think there was some question as to whether she was cheating with on the it, with the, the trains going station. in and out. It was at the time. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. I don't know how specific it got. But apparently, it, this is a related form of of mental oh. illness, I think. It's just too bad. Wow. Got off um, on the right track, though. Oh, now, okay. uh, we're going to go west to Chicago <laughs> for this criminal law issue. And I don't know if you heard about this. This is interesting. The Chicago residents are accusing the cops of bait trucks. Mm. Have you heard about this? Yeah. They leave a giant truck on the street and nobody is guarding it, and it was filled with expensive shoes, and allegedly it was to lure thieves. They believe this police operation uh, is like entrapment. They want to lure folks into stealing. Mm -hmm. Cops say the operation was necessary to bust thieves who've been breaking into cargo shipments in recent weeks. But community activist Charles McKenzie is not happy. He thinks, I heard there were Nikes and Red Bottoms, Louboutins. Louboutins, yeah. Louboutins. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Louis, Louis Vuitton? Or no, no. That, that, that's <laughs> handbags, it's right? different, yeah. See, this Louis is why expensive shoes. Did they arrest really Mel Was, was Mel DeMarcos arrested uh, after going yes, over? Exactly, Mel DeMarcos. Yeah. So the video shows community members gathering at the scene, and uh, an off-camera community member says, hey, they left a truck full of Nikes open in the ghetto. Norfolk uh, <laughs> Southern, the train folks who are working with the cops, disputes this characterization. They say the truck was unmarked, it was locked securely, the contents were invisible to passers-by. So it's not like there was a picture window right. with, a, with a, a Fabergé egg uh, yeah, on display and, and, and a sign that says, no cops around for right. the next 20 minutes. Right. And even then, the thing about entrapments, so many people have a misconception about what the phrase or, or what the concept of defense, really, of entrapment means. Entrapment is really when you induce somebody to break the law and become morally corrupt when mm -hmm. they would not have otherwise done it if you weren't there. Now, right. if somebody's breaking into an unmarked van, they're breaking into an unmarked van regardless of whether you, you know, put Nikes inside it. There's a, a great example where, say, uh, it's illegal to do a, have a protest on a, uh, on a, a certain part of a city uh, uh, bridge or, right. or town square and the cop stands right there and does absolutely nothing unless you walk right on and raise your protest sign and then he arrests you and you say that's entrapment you let me you led yeah. me to believe this was okay by being there and acquiescing to it no you did it of your own volition entrapment is really much more it's not quite coercion but it's closer let me ask you this what if the truck had a big sign on it and it said really nice nikes inside do not break in and steal would that be entrapment i don't know it's a tougher yeah. call what about you remember jerry rubin uh the yippee jerry yes, from the chicago seven uh -huh. no, wrote a not. book called steal this book is that entrapment? <laughs> that's right yeah i've heard of that good actually. point good point you know um there was a a bus in boston and it was uh it was, it was a stage deal where uh, the police crashed a car into the bus, and it was empty when they crashed into it. And then 10 people, according to the surveillance video, got onto the bus and started feeling oh, their neck. Oh, my back. And saying they weren't. Pay yeah, me. They all were arrested for insurance. Scum. Hey, when we come back, folks, we're going to get into the top stories of the week. Uh, one question is, should the titans of the web censor speech? Stay with us on the Royal Oak Show. We'll be back on CRN with the Royal Oak Show. 
Were you scammed into signing a timeshare contract? And did you miss the part that said you have to pay for your great idea? Not only for the rest of your life, but when you're not here anymore, you get to pass this turkey onto your family for them to pay for the rest of their lives. Thanks, Dad. Don't burden your family down the road, and don't be stuck with expensive timeshare payments forever. Get out of your bad idea, timeshare contract, guaranteed, or pay nothing. Call Resort Release today and learn for free how their timeshare exit team can help you legally exit your timeshare contract. They've helped thousands of people and they're A plus rated with a BBB. So if you feel scammed, get mad and get out of your expensive timeshare contract right now, guaranteed. Call N-O-W. 800-470-4125. 800-470-4125. 800-470-4125. That's 800-470-4125. The smartest way for you to get the lowest prices on your plane tickets, domestic or international, is to call SmartFares first or last, but you've got to call us before you book your plane tickets. Fly anywhere in the world, fly anywhere in the U.S., and SmartFares can save you up to 75% on your plane tickets. We have the lowest airline ticket prices on over 500 airlines, and you've got a great 12-hour free cancellation window. Plus, with our live agent help, you can always get fast help and fast answers. So on your next trip, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, how about right now? Pick up your phone and call SmartFares, plus save up to 75% on your plane reservation. So call right now. 800-915-2644. 800-915-2644. 800-915-2644. 800-915-2644. Have you purchased a wine refrigerator or put a wine cellar in your home? Maybe you have a new wine rack. Great news, but what wines will you buy to stock your wine rack? Let me, Michael Horn, help. I'll find the wines for your wine cellar with your taste in mind. We'll determine what varietals, Cabernet, Pinot, Chardonnay, what types of wine, California, French, Italian, you like. We'll find you one-of-a-kind wines from all of our friends we interview daily on the What's Cooking Show and the What's Cooking on Wine Show. On a budget? We'll find you the best affordable wines. Want hard-to-get library wines? We can source those for you, too. And if you need cigars, let L.A. Ram sports legend and iconic actor Fred Dreyer make your selections. Hey, we could even host a wine dinner for you or set up a sports cigar party with Fred. Call me, Michael Horn, at the What's Cooking Today show. Call 818-818-6400. That's 818-818-6400. Let us find the dream wines of your lifetime. Welcome back to the Royal Oaks Show with our co-host Ken Jeffries and our millennial correspondent Connor Oaks. A little later in the program, our first ever world premiere of our monologue where we each Brilliant read idea. jokes written by the other guys so we don't give a damn as to who laughs. Exactly. Yeah, it, it eliminates comedy anxiety. I'm so excited. So our top story tonight, uh, big stories of the week. Of course, Manafort, we're going to talk about him, Michael Avenatti for president. But I think a huge story is the whole idea of web censorship. So the question is, should Facebook censor hate speech and other content that they don't like. And Alex Jones, this maniac who's got InfoWars, I guess he's got this website. Oh, yeah, he's, yeah. he's crazy. Where he he's said, oh, the there was no Sandy Hook massacre. There's a false flag, and crisis actor. Yeah, and crisis it, it was, right. yeah, it was right. because of, of the people who, uh, you know, the gun control people faked the Sandy Hook massacre. Right. So obviously, this guy is a total Wacko. whack job. Not job. You've got parents many parents who lost elementary school children in this massacre and he's essentially calling them liars yeah. and he's he's mixed up in defamation suits in a way it's mission accomplished because everybody's talking about Alex Jones yes. here we're talking about it but he's obviously a bad guy and he's mixed up with the legal stuff and so now people are taking his stuff off of the web now the first amendment says government may not restrict free speech so that doesn't apply to the web now some states like California go beyond that and they say well if you're a company if you're General Electric you can't stop your employees from speaking freely so there's free speech in that sense but First Amendment only protects governmental restrictions so now we come into the area of the web and I guess the question is is everybody comfortable 
with letting Mark Zuckerberg or uh, Bezos or whoever uh, are the other titans of the web deciding what should come down. It seems like, you know, horrible, hateful Nazi, uh, ISIS uh, propaganda should come down. Alex Jones should come down, it seems like. But are we okay with the guys who run Facebook and the rest of, 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 the, of the things that we all watch being the corporate masters who decide what we see and what we don't see? It's not a comfortable position to take either way in the abstract when you look at this was a huge iter uh, issue on, the, I guess you could say, liberal Twitter this last week because exactly of the Alex Jones issue and because the CEO, Jack whatever, however you say his last name, post Soviet or something. No, I can't remember. That, that, that was a bad joke. Uh, whatever Jack's uh, last name is, um, he came out and said, we didn't ban Alex Jones from Twitter, and the answer is simple. The answer is he didn't break our rules, and he lays out our rules, and it's this totally hands-off way to throw your, your, your control up into the cloud and say, look, we only police very certain specific things like threats of violence and other things that uh, that threaten people's livelihood or, or, or health. And, and so we're not going to uh, uh, kick Alex Jones off our platform. Well, they have kicked a lot of people off of uh, the Twitter platform and every other social media platform for a, a number of reasons. Uh, they comply even with the Chinese government's request to censor certain parts of, of uh, uh, their website um, for access in that country um, and in other countries as well. And so it really is a selective enforcement thing where they're already doing it to some extent. And the question is really, do we want to have some sort of law or policy that is across the board? I don't no, well, I'm sh not should should the web be following the lead of the government though? Mm. Now, again, the First Amendment only applies to the government, sure. but we've seen some really interesting pro fr uh, free speech positions uh, out of the Supreme Court recently. The First Amendment uh, recognizes that free speech is not absolute. For right. example, defamation. Yeah. Y you know, you can't lie, hurt reputation, you can get sued. Yeah. For example, fire in a crowded theater. Right. But when it comes to hate speech, the Supreme Court actually has basically said, hate speech, you, we're not going to shut it down. Mm -hmm. If it incites riot, yes. Right. But short of that, for example, recently they had that horrible situation where these uh, anti-gay people are uh, protesting military funerals, yeah. saying God hates Westboro Baptist Church. Right, Westboro. exactly. And the right. U.S. Supreme Court, led by Roberts, said it's okay for them right. to do that. We don't like yeah. it. We hate it, as a matter of fact, but we're not going to stop it. So should the webmasters be in a position to be doing anything differently? And from the, the right-wing perspective, there's a lot of worry that because the people who run Silicon Valley and the web tilt progressive, tilt to the left, you're generally, you're going to see more censorship of right-wing stuff. This Not power just wacko Alex Jones types, yeah. but just, you know, the Sean Hannity's of right. the world and so on. Is that not a concern? Yeah, I mean, when you think about it, these ISPs and other app companies or social media companies, they perform a semi-governmental-like function, right? They control the right. media that we see that comes into our homes in the same way that the government controls the roads that allow people to travel to our homes or us to our jobs or people to deliver packages to us. These are crucial thoroughfares. What about the end of net neutrality, too? Does that play a role oh, in Oh, absolutely. Stuff? It's basically, there are a lot of companies that don't want... And net neutrality is gone now, right? Am I... Assuming that? California has... Uh, well, the Trump administration is easing up on it. Right. It's not so big on net neutrality. Right. And so essentially, I guess what they're saying is, you know, these big companies, they should be able to control their, their pipeline of access. Right. But uh, this puts a lot of responsibility on those companies. Some of them don't want to control it because then that means they have to start censoring people. That's true. Yeah. Hey, when we come back, uh, this is a, a shock to a lot of people, but it looks like a real thing. Michael Avenatti, Stormy Daniels' lawyer, is running for president. Stay with us on The Royal Oak Show. We'll be back on CRN with the Royal Oak Show. You're experiencing pain, back pain, shoulder, elbow, or hand pain, pain from a sports injury. If so, schedule a visit with Dr. Michael Sheps, the leading expert in laser therapy for pain management. Call 310-873-4422 or go to drsheps.com. Experience Epic T, the breakthrough laser therapy system that Dr. Sheps developed to make you pain-free in less time. Laser therapy is a non-invasive, safe, and effective in-office procedure that penetrates deep into your skin without damaging the tissue. It perfectly targets areas of pain to promote fast, natural healing. Relax your muscles 
muscles, ease muscle spasms, joint stiffness, and arthritis pain while increasing blood circulation. For over 25 years, Dr. Sheps has helped Olympic athletes and sports enthusiasts alike get back in the game. Schedule your visit with Dr. Sheps at his Brentwood office in California. Call 310-873-4422 or visit drsheps.com. That's D-R-S-H-E-P-S.com. 310-873-4422. Do you want to fly somewhere, anywhere in the world? Smart travelers call MyFlightSearch.com for the best deals on flight tickets. Going to Manila, Bangkok, London, how about Singapore? Call MyFlightSearch.com for the lowest flight tickets available. What about a local vacation? Let's say you want to fly to Vegas, Orlando, Miami, Los Angeles, or Denver. Pick up the phone and call MyFlightSearch.com right now. We have exclusive deals that you can't find anywhere else. The only way you can get these low airline prices is by calling us. We have so many low prices available, we can't possibly tell them to you right here and now. If you're flying somewhere anytime in the next six months and you want the lowest airline ticket prices anywhere, you owe it to yourself to save a ton of money. So pick up your cell phone and call myflightsearch.com right now. Call 800-445-3166. 800-445-3166. That's 800-445-3166. Call now. 800-445-3166. Come to Angelo's and Vinci's Restaurante to see memorabilia of movie stars and theatrical magic right in downtown Fullerton, California. The art of the great masters in an Italian town square complete with storefronts of old. Italian butchers and cheesemongers, fruit and wine vendors, seamstresses showing their wares. The romance of Romeo and Juliet. Find our mystical room of the moon and don't forget King Kong, Dracula, Frankenstein and who knows what awaits you in the wine cellar. Enjoy the great food. We hand stuff our pastas, roll each and every tortellini, bake our own bread and make all of our sauce is fresh from our private stock of Sicilian family recipes. Pasta to seafood, chicken to award-winning pizzas, tiramisu flowed in from Rome. If you can't find something on our menu to tempt you, you don't like Italian food. Try our Sunday brunch, all you can eat, just $21.95. And Angelo's and Vinci's has been named the best Italian restaurant in Orange County two years in a row, and our owner has been named Restaurant Tour of the Year. Angelo's and Vinci's, Fullerton, California, 714-879-4022 or angelosandvinci's.com. What are you going to do with your old car? You can try selling it, you could junk it, or you could donate it to Heritage for the Blind. Your car will be towed away for free, and your donation is tax deductible. Just call 1-800-785-9618. Heritage for the Blind accepts cars, vans, trucks, and boats. It doesn't matter if your vehicle runs or not. It will be towed away for free, and you'll be supporting those that need help. Heritage for the Blind is a nonprofit organization that helps the visually impaired live fuller lives. Call right now to donate your car, and as a special thank you for calling, you'll receive a free three day vacation voucher to many exciting locations. Call Heritage for the Blind right now, 1 800 785 9618. Donating is easy, and your vehicle is towed away for free. Plus, you'll get a free vacation voucher. Call now, 1 800 785 9618. That's 1 800 785 9618. Welcome back to the Royal Oak Show with our co host Ken Jeffries and our millennial correspondent Connor Oaks. Um, we used to guess our bumper music, guys. Uh, can you guess this one? Mike, can you pump this up a little bit, uh, the sound? Uh, Snot's running down his nose. Any guess? It sounds like Jethro Tull or something. Very yeah. good. It is but Jethro I can't, But I can't remember, like, and Slick as a Brick or whatever Aqualung. the heck it is. Aqualung. Aqualung. Exactly right. Nailed it. So, guys, uh, we are launching the first ever Oil Oak Show uh, monologue. And uh, to kick it off, uh, let's just, uh, Mike, please uh, play us in on this song. Hell! Anybody, anybody <laughs> over the age of six or seven is going to remember yeah. this was the Johnny Carson show. Yes! All right, so what we've done, folks, is to take the comedy anxiety out, because the problem very, is when you tell difficult. a joke, you're really worried people aren't going to like it, they're not going to like you. Yeah. It, it, it drives people Personal. out of comedy. We've developed a system here where we each write a joke, but we don't r read the joke we wrote. We force our co-hosts to read it. So we're going to start out with you, Ken. Uh, please kick us off, read a joke. And again, folks, this hey isn't Ken's joke. Should I, since it's Johnny Carson, should I read it like Johnny Carson? I'll read like you I like. I can do Jay Leno better. However you like. Remember the... No, I can't do that. Sorry, Jay. Because Jay may be watching right now. I he didn't probably is. Sure he is. He's a first-time right. watcher. That's right. Well, he's working under his... Uh, Jay's garage with his cars. Mm -hmm. Okay. Background. Here we go. 
Remember the president and the first lady had a little dust up over her watching CNN on, on the Air Force One television set? Well, they smoothed it over. But it looks like there could be trouble in paradise. Instead of CNN, Melania is binge watching Divorce Court. Hey! Hey! I'm, I'm not sure when I've heard I a reading was, like that. Really. I, th <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever heard a reading I thought it was quite be, like that. I thought you it was say it's be... a crummy reading. Yeah, nobody's no, heard a reading Ken, like that. Ken, what do you mean crummy? Ken, you're great. You're Why would you're you assume flower. I meant crummy? You're amazing. Okay, I thought it was going to be she's Counter binge watching Orange is the New Black. That'd <laughs> <laughs> be good, too. Clink, clink, Trump. But I'm bump. Okay. Uh, so, Connor, you're up. Yeah, all right. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, what were the first words of a jailed political consultant who sees his new and impenetrable surroundings? Man, a fort! Now that's very timely. That I thought that was great. Very that timely. Was excellent. Well and done. last well but done. not least, I thought that was great. Yeah. The toughest part of being a millennial Good is job. when you sneeze out your nose ring, it lands on your avocado toast, your man bun comes undone, and you can never afford to own a, own a home because, despite massive corporate fro product profits, wages are flat. That was the worst reading <laughs> of a joke anybody had I, ever done. I, I need this. Can up. we let Connor? Connor wrote this. that joke. And no. Can, it, can we let? Wait, Con what do you mean? Let's let Connor. Let's let Connor read it. Connor, you're going to be so much better than I do. Take two. Here we go. All right. All right. All right. <clears throat> the toughest part of being a millennial is when you sneeze out your nose ring and it lands in your avocado toast and then your man bun comes undone and you can never afford a, to own a home because despite massive corporate profits, uh, wages are flat. That you nailed. Hey! That's so that's our first, uh, our first annual monologue. I'm yes! So, Michael Avenatti, guys, uh, this is for real. He, the guy wants to be president of the United States. Now, we know Eric Garcetti, mayor of Los Angeles, wants to be president. He's been sure. visiting Iowa and South sure. Carolina. Yeah, I'll tell you, I, I, almost, I, I wrote a story for KBC, and yeah? I, I meant to write Eric Garcetti, and I almost I voiced it, and it's a good thing I checked it before I sent it to the radio station. I, I voiced it as Gil Garcetti. <laughs> well, and sure, went, it used uh, to be DA. But I did change That's it in time, so it didn't close make catch. the air yeah, like close call. So Michael Avenatti is pondering a presidential campaign. He says, I'm strongly considering it. It's uh, going to have a lot to do with who enters the race. Um, he went to Iowa recently. He ate two pork chops at the state fair. You know he's serious. <laughs> he's going to be addressing Iowa Democrats on fr uh, this coming Friday at a party dinner known as the Wing Ding. That's a traditional proving ground for White House aspirants. Next, he is going to New Hampshire. He's headed to the first primary state within the next month. Wow. He's says, anybody paying attention to the last six months knows the last thing I need is additional publicity. So that's his excuse. So what do we think about this? Does it, is it just a sign of the apocalypse <laughs> that Stormy Daniels lawyer would be seriously thinking, gosh, you know, why can't I take a shot at the presidency? You know, this is a great and uh, egalitarian nation great country. Yeah. where anybody uh, can rise from the bottom, uh, that is, being a plaintiff's lawyer, and uh, arrive at, a, at the vaunted <laughs> position of being uh, a semi-celebrity with a chance at unseating Trump. I'm thinking that the half hot dog that I didn't want to finish that I threw away last week and is probably still sitting in the trash can under my kitchen sink uh, should be a good presidential candidate. Or at least a VP on the Avenatti he ticket. Could take, they could yeah. take down Trump. The Hebrew national ticket. I guess. Ooh, nice. So here's got my, that angle. Yeah. So here's, that angle. Here's my problem with this. Cynthia Nixon seriously is running for governor in New York. Right. Yes, we have Oprah Winfrey on the short list for Democratic presidential candidates because she knocks it out of the park at, at some awards ceremony, yeah. the, the Golden Globes or something. We had Schwarzenegger as governor. Uh, we've got Donald Trump as president. What am I missing here? If I want to go have a brain transplant, <laughs> I'm going to go to a brain surgeon, mm -hmm. okay? If I want my, my pipes fixed at home, I'm going to an experienced plumber. Why is it we are willing to trust really important jobs like our future, the future of the nation, our children, our grandchildren, are they going to be safe and secure, are they going to be broke or have money? Why are we willing to even entertain the idea of a Cynthia Nixon or a Michael Avenatti? Is it so because easy? Easy to be a politician. Yeah, well, to Donald Trump. I mean, yeah, uh, what do you, but like it isn't just Trump. It's Schwarzenegger. Yeah, it's true. Jesse Ventura. It's, it's, it's Ronald Reagan. Reagan. I mean, it's Ronald Reagan. Look, yeah. Kane, the rest, Kane, the wrestler Kane became mayor of a county yeah, in Tennessee. He did. Yeah. 
You know? And as a matter of fact, you you know the, the wrestler on Fox News who appears on a lot of their shows, their panel shows, his name is Tyrus. He's built like a truck. He just got elected to whatever his hometown is. Huh. He's mayor. Wow. Uh, so, but, I mean, I don't well, understand. Well, anybody can run. I mean, right. you know. Now, it's funny you mentioned Ronald Reagan because, of course, that might be a good response because the yeah. consensus is that I, I happen to believe in that he was a pretty darn good president, that even though he may not have been the most intellectual or hardworking guy, he had basic principles, surrounded himself with good people, and things worked out quite well, like the end of the Soviet Union. So maybe that's an argument in those rare cases w that it could work out. But in general, aren't we playing with fire by willing to even entertain Oprah Winfrey or Cynthia Nixon? Because aren't these jobs too important to trust to celebrities? Well, I mean, when you think about it, the, the, the real question is, would the AIDS crisis in the 80s have gone as badly if we had not had a celebrity uh, figurehead uh, do-nothing president, Ronald Reagan. Would the Iran-Contra scandal still have happened if we had had a career politician in place? Maybe. I mean, Nixon, well, he's not a celebrity. Say, yeah. We had bad presidents before, but and tons of Lyndon bad Lyndon Johnson presidents. was as experienced as anybody, Nixon included, and look how he screwed up with yeah, Vietnam. Yeah, a lot of people are going to tell you that the only qualification for being a politician is being a liar. And to tell you what, actors are and, professional and, liars. And being good-looking. And oh, I think looks that. have a lot. And Kennedy was the first real television president. Right. Checkers and debate. So I think looks had a... Had a, had a, uh, a a fa well, they were a factor. Absolutely. So fascinating poll. Um, a, a couple of polls actually come to mind. They took a, a poll of what people fear the most. Mm -hmm. And uh, the very f number one fear was public speaking. And number two fear was death. So that means for most people, if you're at the funeral, you'd rather be in the casket than giving the eulogy. Kind of weird. Yeah. So they've now taken a poll about what would uh, Americans rather not talk about. And both in social settings and just in intimate with friends and so on. And you know what the number one thing? people just won't, won't, don't want to talk about? What it's, could be under Donald Trump's fake hair? Well, it's no, it, it's money. How much money people make. Oh, money Ooh. would be. What yeah. about I was, yeah, was going to say politics. Well, I politics would be number one. Wow, no, money is only worse. one in ten Americans would feel comfortable talking about how much money they make at a dinner party. And frankly, I'm surprised it's as high as 10%. Because yeah. I think, at least in America, I don't know if it's a cultural thing, if it's around the world, I think people are so secretive yeah. about whether they make 50 or 100 grand or 200 or a million or whatever. It's like you absolutely, you know, but, yeah. but that's... People's yeah, financial worth I don't know, is their self-worth. your experience? Yeah. Have you noticed in your lives that people over the years just are, you know, kind of closed mouth about, about money? Well, issues? they don't argue about, like on Facebook, for instance, or Twitter, they don't argue about money, but they argue about politics. That's yeah, true. And I'm, but I'm not talking about arguing so much. I'm talking about discussing it and revealing, you know, what you... How, well, why how would you want to reveal it at a party? Yeah, right? Somebody say, how much do you make? Or, I mean, or any, either anywhere. you're embarrassing or you're a braggart. One like, way or I the other. how much do you make? Yeah. There you, you go. You know, I have found... By the way, how much do you make? No. <laughs> oh, no. it, I have found in my career that it's awkward and uncomfortable, but I'm the kind of person who will just come out right out and say it and tell people how much You're I one make. one of the one, one out of ten. Exactly, yeah. among my coworkers. And I have discovered that people are very appreciative of it. For example, when people who have worked there longer than I have and more experience than I have uh, have suddenly realize they're being being paid a little less than the new guy and they get you to tell go, them that? yeah why? I mean, because they need to know that because the it's only the boss that wants why you not they, to why know why do they need to know that they need to know that so they can march into the boss's office and say what the heck you are you doing volunteer this information pa are you drawing con pulling connor in here for that that price when i make more well, or if if they make you more, must be they really popular at the themselves. office by the way yeah or they may feel really good about themselves for oh okay at least they make more than <laughs> yeah, connor right yeah right Thank God. what you're saying is consistent with this survey because well, millennials, younger folks in their 20s, they're much more likely, to, both in a social setting and just one-on-one, -on -one, to reveal how much money to yeah talk really? seriously about money, about how much they make, uh, well, about maybe, you know maybe what, that's a good idea. Then I don't know. I suppose so you, I guess you're leading leading the way for us. Uh, uh, I make three dollars a week for this show. <laughs> just so you know, Chen. If you need wait a minute, that's more than Mike, I make for this. You need to march up to Mike Gary and say, "Give me five. So dollars, though. Dollars, uh, yeah, right. Dollars. <laughs> so speaking of of money, this segues in nicely. I don't, I don't, I don't know if you saw the Wall Street Journal. Uh, you had a, wait, you had to say you don't make any money from this show. Okay, so <laughs> a, a, a big article by Phil Graham, uh, you know, the former senator. Um, yeah. Good news, guys. I don't know if you've heard this, but you know, this is a, like a headline stop the presses. There is no income inequality in America. Oh, goody! We have solved we the did. problem. You know, yep. I'm so thankful that he wrote that because oh, th there are there's an organization for economic cooperation and development, and they're mm -hmm. always saying the U.S. is. 
terrible on income inequality. And mm -hmm. what Phil Graham explains is that this is biased because they are underreporting income transfers. And here's the deal. There is no reason for this, but they exclude Medicare and Medicaid, which redistributes over $750 billion a year to the bottom 40% of American households. <laughs> and that money does not count when they consider whether we have income inequality in America or not. Right. The data also exclude 93 other federal redistribution programs that annually transfer $520 billion to low-income households like children's health insurance program, temporary assistance for needy families, and so on. So this means that the comparison by this group omit 1.6 trillion in American in annual redistributions to low-income Americans. That's close to 80 percent of their total redistribution receipts. And plus, they point out the U.S. has the most progressive income taxes of all of its peer group: Australia, Japan, uh, uh, United Kingdom, and so on. U.S. households earn about a third of all income, but they pay uh, the, the top 10 percent earn a third of all income, but they pay 45 percent of income taxes. So when all transfer payments and taxes are counted, the U.S redistributes a larger share of its disposable income than any other country than France. France has us beat. All right. Uh, I'll say, I'll say, <laughs> I'll say that uh, maybe our uh, judgments, mathematical evaluations of income inequality are flawed in a way because they don't take some things into account. But the idea that saying that because of Medi-Cal or Medicare or that the government, I don't know, builds roads or hospitals, uh, Saying that that means that there is no income inequality in this country is kind of like saying, well, you have roads in the country and you're not dead, so stop complaining. Well, that's a good point, but let me ask you this. <laughs> you, don't think, you don't think that we should have income equality. You Equal don't think you no, don't think everybody should have equality. the same amount no, of money, right? No, not complete equality. No, not complete. So that you believe in income? You believe money. in income inequality then? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm it's glad we established that. It's just a matter that. of degree. Uh, I thought it was so fun to watch the fight this week between Ben Shapiro, the conservative uh, polemicist, and what's the lady's uh, the socialist lady from Brooklyn's name? Oh, uh, o yeah, Ocasio. Uh, uh, How do you say it? Ocasio Cortez. Yeah. Okay, where was so, she on? What, uh, what happened was that Ben Shapiro challenged her to a debate mm -hmm. because, you know, they're, they're poles apart, and yeah. it would be fascinating to see the two of them on television yeah. having a good old-fashioned debate. And so he, he said, I, I challenge you to a debate, and, she, and he said, I'm going to give 10000 bucks if you show up with, uh, with me at the forum to your campaign. And you know what she said? I'm not going to respond to every man that, that makes a cat call. This is like a cat call. And cat I'm thinking, call. yeah, I mean, you know, like when a construction worker says, hey, baby, you know, uh, you if, know I, nice if I or, yeah, told you you had a nice body, would you hold it against me? Right, right. <laughs> That's a cat call, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. Now, I don't understand in what sense a challenge for a debate is a cat call. When I was in high school and college, because I couldn't get any dates, I was on the debate team mm -hmm. for seven years. Yeah. And when I would show up at a tournament and there'd be a female competitor, I didn't cat call her and say, hey, sweetie, how'd you like a debate? You get to pick, affirmative or negative. In what sense is this challenge to hurry cat call? Because what it's trying to do is scream for attention that he does not deserve. This is a uh, polemicist, is a gentle way to put it. Uh, wacko uh, was oh, another way no, to put he's, it. He's, for ben he's a, a very solid, down the uh, middle conservative. You're right. You in know, that on the right wing. He, yeah, he's, he's, he's he's not Alex Jones. Jones. He did at one point leave Breitbart, which is yeah. commendable, uh, but yeah. that does not make him a the good quote, dude. Uh, the quote in question actually is uh, uh, Alexandra Ocasio Cortez's response was just like catcalling, I don't owe a response to unsolicited requests from men with bad intentions. There we are. Very clever. What does that mean? Together. Bad intentions? Right. What, to put her in a really bad light, he, maybe? I don't yes, really know exactly. that he had a bad intention. He, I mean, did. he wants publicity. He did. Yes. But she would get publicity, and frankly, he's been a really solid presence I in the media for a long time. He may be about where she is in terms of Q factors of, of you know knowledge. He may be the, about the public this tall too. No, he <laughs> he is. Uh, the, that's a Facebook Live exclusive Q, video. Q factor. Yeah. That's an old yeah. TV yeah. term, by the no, way. No, this Shapiro is. Uh, how do I put this gently? A whack with a podcast. And I'll tell yeah. you, as as a whack with a podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I, I know uh, Are we that. Like a tri Whack? Yeah, the, we don't deserve. You want to know Howard, Howard Stern has the whack pack, so right. we might as well there be. We, in we don't deserve okay. a response or the uh, from or the intention of uh, a member of Congress. Look, this woman is about to uh, uh, engage in a sacred duty to represent us and 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 help us and protect us uh, and. His intentions are bad. His intentions are to ambush her and uh, you know wave his uh, Harvardness around in front of her. 
and uh, make I, a look I'd at I'd pay it. to see it. I would, too. Is it because he's an Orthodox Jew? Is that why you don't like him, yeah. Connor? Yeah. It, it, hey! Uh, well, I'm just uh, trying Ken, to find Ken, can you answer that question? I, I have to find no, out uh, the actual I, I don't know. Let me... Yeah, let me call my rabbi and we'll find out later. So finally, uh, you guys, uh, a literature class at Davidson College is using contract grading, allowing students to pick ahead of time their grade for the class and the workload they need to complete uh, it and earn it. I, I don't know. <laughs> Do you think this is a good idea? Doesn't uh, seem very ambitious. She, she says there's a strong pedagogical rationale for contract grading. And the problem is the kids won't know what that word means because... <laughs> contract grading. <laughs> <of> contract grading. <laughs> Uh, when we come back, we're going to have our Hot Tub Time Machine feature on our second Moron of the Week. Stay with us. We'll be back on CRN with the Royal Oak Show. Hey, Lorraine, do you realize that your mother, my mother-in-law, Chef Maria, has been serving Las Vegas since 1949? Yes, I do, Dennis. That's when she first met Howard Hughes, who fell in love with her cooking. And in 1955, she opened her first restaurant on Fremont Street. Yes, dear. And another great customer was Liberace. Wow. Then in 1962, while Frank Sinatra and the Rat Pack were causing global excitement on the Las Vegas Strip, your family opened their second restaurant. And in 19. In 72, Elvis Presley began electrifying Las Vegas audiences and eating in our restaurants. You know, Lorraine, this is quite a town. There's only one Las Vegas. And there's only one bootlegger Italian bistro. Folks, when you're in Las Vegas, come visit us. We'll make you feel like you're part of our family. The bootlegger Italian bistro, conveniently located at 7700 Las Vegas Boulevard, South Strip. Visit our website at www.bootleggerlasvegas.com. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS? News flash, the president has changed the tax laws. And now, you may be able to pay the IRS less. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes, the tax doctor can help you pay the IRS as little as possible allowed by law. There are new tax laws for business owners, the self-employed, even W-2 workers. If you have a back tax problem or a few years of unfilled returns, new help to save you money is now here. Call right now to see how the new tax Tax laws can help you. Plus, right now, we'll waive the consultation fee and give you a free tax savings report. Attention business owners, the self-employed, and W-2 workers. Make this free call to the tax doctor now and learn how to take advantage of the new tax laws that may help you pay the IRS less. 800-985-1610. 800-985-1610. 800-985-1610. That's 800-985-1610. Chef Charlie Palmer and winemaker Clay Morrison are announcing the 8th annual Project Zen event taking place Friday, August 17th and 18th at Hotel Healdsburg in Healdsburg, California. It's a big weekend event offering a series of dining and educational events hosted by Chef Palmer, Clay Morrison, and some of the industry's most elite winemakers. Project Zen lines up 21 of the most highly acclaimed Zinfandel wines for tasting. And Project 21 has the number 21, a significant number in most cases of Down syndrome because there's an extra copy of chromosome 21 which changes the body and the brain's normal development. New this year, the big seminar called Who's Zen Is It Anyway? Also a big vineyard lunch at Rockpile AVA with Clay and Carrie Morrison and the big Project Zen event Saturday evening where you sample 21 of the finest Zins. Get tickets and more information by going to projectzin.org. Projectzin, Z I N dot O R G forward slash tickets. Projectzin.org forward slash tickets. Welcome back to the Royal Oak Show with our co host Ken Jeffries and our millennial correspondent Connor Oaks. So, guys, uh, the moron of the week candidate up at the top of the show, he was hard to beat. He was the guy that teased Bison and the Yellowstone Rangers. Arrested him and uh, hauled him off to jail. I think he's got a life sentence. So here's <laughs> the competitor. Uh, former superintendent of his Virginia high school. Um, uh, he's, he's not really happy with how his criminal case has been uh, handled. His name is Thomas Tramaglini. And uh, he's accused of repeatedly pooping on his high school track. Uh, oh, yeah. I think he's yeah, got, I remember that. I, yeah, uh, yeah, we, we, we have that story, too, I think. Metal issues. Yeah, I'm sure KF, KBC did. KBC did, yeah. yeah Do you just have KF. a grudge? No, God, no. He, yeah. he just have a grudge? Uh, I don't know. I think he he had a bowel movement, is what he had. I repeatedly. think he, he was late in his career, was getting pooped. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he's oh, suing the cops. You know why he's suing the cops? Wait, he's why? suing the cops? Yeah. Why is he suing because the cops? Because they put 
uh, his mugshot on the uh, the public mugshot list, and he claims that uh, you know things like lewdness, litter. Um, public defecation, uh, are low-level municipal offenses, he says. He says it's like getting photographed and fingerprinted for a speeding ticket. So, in his opinion, what he did didn't rise to the level of, it's not mugshot worthy. Right. And so he's suing the police department. Tell that to little Susie who takes a lap, <laughs> gets tripped, and lands face first right. in his, in his uh, Good BM. point, good and, point. And she'd be at that school, he'd be her principal. Oh, God. One million dollars he wants due to loss of income, harm to his reputation, which was so good. Yeah. <laughs> emotional distress. <laughs> right, right. And I think he's got some emotional distress that may have caused uh, the incident and invasion of privacy. So oh, my gosh. He's, he's our second candidate. So, guys, who, who do you think is the most moronic person? Is it the high school principal, uh, superintendent, or would it be the guy who was teasing the bison? It's the pooping principal. Pooping principal? I agree. I agree. Thank you. I'm back to agreeing with Connor. Oh, yeah. yeah I, I, I agree mean, with you as well. Now, if, the bi if the bison pooped on the track, that'd be a problem. That's true. So, I was. Uh, anyway, there I was driving along uh, near Echo Park, you know, with all the lily pads and so on recently, yeah. and I saw this giant billboard, and it's for Jim Beam uh, Bourbon. Ooh. And I see the, just the L.A., Los Angeles Dodgers logo, right huge on there. And I'm thinking, what's the deal? Well, it turns out Jim Beam is the official bourbon of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Did you have any idea that the team had an official bourbon? Is I'll Jim Beam that. a sponsor of this show? Can we get some free Jim Beam up in here, please? Well, I, but, I mean, why do the Dodgers need a, a bourbon? What are the, uh, Terryton's, the official cigarette as of we the watch, Los Angeles as Dodgers? As we watch our season unravel, we <laughs> need to kick a couple back and Do they cool have off. kegs in the bullpen for slow games? Kegs of bourbon, Dad? Can you imagine I, Vince Scully doing it. commercials? I don't think yeah. you drink enough. Kegs of bourbon? Know. Maybe you drink too much. <laughs> <laughs> get that shortstop a uh, little juiced up. Yeah. So, guys, I don't know if you heard of this. Win. But uh, thank goodness they're filling a, a, a sex loophole. Uh, the federal government is considering uh, making it illegal for federal law enforcement officials to have sex with people in their custody, targeting a legal loophole that's allowed authorities to claim that instances of alleged sexual assault or rape were consensual. How in what? the world is it not already illegal? It's 2018. For a cop to rape somebody whether they're in custody right, yeah, or if right, he's right, just right. chatting them up at the donut shop. Right. Why would we need to fill this lo loophole? Well, the idea, I think, is that right now sex that appears consensual is okay between cops and people they have detained. Right. This legal loophole allows that to occur, and this rule change, law change, would make sure that any sex between a cop and someone that they've detained is non-consensual, yeah. yeah. obviously, even if it appears to be, because I think you're right. let's be serious, yeah. it is! Hey guys, we have time for Hot Tub Time Machine. Uh, Mike, would you please play this little sliver of history for us? My fellow Americans, our long national nightmare <laughs> is over. So, the question is, who was that talking? Oh, no, no. It wasn't Plato or Socrates. No, no. So, who do you think that might have been? Good old Jerry Ford. Jerry Ford, and he was announcing, uh, what was he announcing? I'm embarrassed to say I don't know. Well, the, the day we'll after he you. became president, then uh, Nixon quit. Yeah. Really? Well, I think, heard, I think he that, was right? talking the about papers. the pardon. Oh. I think he was talking about the pardon. Oh, uh, okay. and, and well, that, that was the next, no, actually, little, not yet. It was the next month. The pardon came later. Oh, wow. And the 44th anniversary of Richard Nixon's resignation was just 30 How should we week. celebrate? How about I, another? I Thanks for watching, folks. We'll see you next week on the Royal Oak Show. Have a great week. Which is most important because that was your theme. Are you tired of hearing?